Hello and welcome to another edition of Witchfinder's Gaming Vault. Today's game review is a Mega Drive game called Subterranea, as you can see on the screen here. Let's look at the fact file for this one. Subterranea was released in 1994 in European territories and it is a Mega Drive exclusive. It was published by Sega and developed by Xyrinx. And the price I paid for it was just £3, back when you could get a Mega Drive game for £3, including postage. And the current going rate, if you want to get yourself a copy on eBay, is about £25 plus. There's not many sold items on there when I took a look at it, but I think you can probably get a copy for £20 to £25. Maybe a little bit more if you want it to include the instructions. Let's begin by taking a look at the packaging then, and here you can see it, it's got the Subterranea logo at the top, it's got some imagery there of a spaceship underground being chased by some kind of dragon, and there's also some little men on the ground there as well, Sega logo, Mega Drive logo, all that kind of good stuff that you'd get on a Mega Drive game, and there's the spine which again has got all that stuff on it, let's move on to the back cover, and you can see quite a lot of screenshots, so you can see it's some kind of shoot em up. Uh, you probably already knew that before you started watching this video and it's for one player and it says aliens have invaded a vital subterranean mining colony use light speed reflexes and total concentration to fly your prototype fighter through impossible caverns in fact i just noticed it says light speed reflexes and and total concentration which actually broke my concentration anyway it says fly your prototype fighter through impossible caverns rescuing miners and blasting the aliens into the darkest pits of space and also blasting spelt wrong so yeah terrible uh, quality control on the back cover there and we've got all the instructions in other languages as well that about does it for the outside of the cover let's take a look at the instructions before looking at the instructions let's take a quick look at the cartridge and there it is it's pretty much the same imagery as you saw on the front cover it says subterranean on the top there it says sega mega drive on the bottom so there you go and here's the instructions and these are basically annoying because what you get on every page like a lot of these european uh, games is that you get a little paragraph on the left hand side in English and then the same paragraph or, or section of the instructions over and over again in all the different languages so it goes like that all the way through uh, so I can't really be bothered to look at this in any great detail but it's got you know the usual sort of stuff about your briefing for your mission and all that kind of stuff it's really hard to focus on this because of how small the actual section that's in English is so there you go it's got the controls it's got the whatever that is there more of the controls and it's got the options and more controls uh, can't turn the page over configuration and on it goes you've got some overview of how to play the game instrument panel uh, and yeah it's just boring looking through it with this tiny little paragraph per page what a waste of printing this page was here with just a tiny paragraph at the top in each language and then all this white space so yeah uh, I'm not going to bother looking at the instructions anymore. They're there, they're the instructions, it's a shoot 'em up, it's not going to be that complicated. I probably don't even need to read them. Let's get on and play the game. Okay, so the game is booted up and we're getting some kind of introductory cutscene thing going on. There's an alert, something exploded, transmission's terminated. I think we've seen this before, haven't we? Aliens overrunning a colony. And here we go, here's the title screen, Subterranea, in a 3D sort of rendered font there. And some very big text here saying with the options of start game, options or control. So let's have a look at the options first. So we've got levels normal, hard or easy, let's stick with normal. And the usual Mega Drive thing of, uh, oh okay we've got some interesting things here, different choices of music. Uh, and also disable music which I don't want to do uh, so also the sound options which you get on lots of Mega Drive games back to the title screen and let's have a look at the controls got some music in the background of this title screen along with the text of course uh, so we've got training or configuration configuration just lets you change the settings the buttons and things which I don't really need to do but training is a nice option because you get to try out the controls before you start the game so we've got one of the buttons is thrust so you can see in this very basic sort of grid style uh, environment with some grey walls you can practice the thrusting of the ship which is very um, responsive I suppose you'd say but um, it's very quick you can very easily su suddenly quickly thrust around the environment and you've also got the options to fire weapon select doesn't really apply for this but that's the other button and you've obviously got left and right for the controls for 
rotating left and right and you can also do back thrust which if you push down you can put you basically so the one button will push you upwards and pushing the down will thrust, thrust you downwards quickly maybe that'll come into play at some point but we've seen enough of that let's get the game started so we're doing wittering on for two minutes so let's get going So you begin with an overview of the mission, mission report level 1, uh, the alien attack on this mining site is a result of long lasting hostility towards the human race and you have been chosen to launch a counter attack piloting an experimental attack ship, alien awareness is low giving you a chance to get used to your new ship but time is of the essence, satellite system is still under development, satscan 1 will have to suffice, we will transmit upgraded versions when available. Is that it? That's it, I think I have to press start now, yeah, there we go. So then we get another introductory cutscene of your guy looking <laughs> very cheesy cool. He's got a great mullet there, like spiky hair with a ponytail. Drops into the ship and finally the game begins. So yeah, introductory level, not too difficult. You can see basically it's, it's like an upgraded or enhanced version of uh, the uh, popular computer game Thrust which I've reviewed on my channel in the past which itself was based on the popular arcade game Gravitar it's a similar sort of concept but uh, more 16-bit graphical style rather than the vectors so you thrust around you've got fuel to keep an eye on uh, and you've got weapons which you can use auto fire on if you don't auto fire and you can see in the top left hand corner is a thing called Mega which gradually builds up and allows a more powerful deployment of a weapon so yeah, fairly easy to begin with. Just landing down here, there's some POWs to collect. I have played through the first few levels already to get an idea of how to play this game. It's a pretty tough game, not going to lie. Um, as you'll soon see, the first level is not too tough, but oh, my fuel's low already. Hopefully there's a fuel pod to collect down here. So you do have shields, so you don't lose lives instantaneously. I really need some fuel. There we go, there's a fuel pod. There's my fuel restarted. Also some missiles to pick up down here. Not much else down there actually. There's no need to really go down here because the rest of the level's over to the right. Sorry, the left. Uh, yeah, so it's very the thrusting is very reactive is the best way to describe it. You only have to hit it just a fraction of a the button a fraction of a moment and you, you go thrusting off in, into the sky. So we've got some enemies to get rid of here. Let's switch to the missiles to get rid of these. That's it, missiles have run out now. So another fuel pods pick up here. Get that. Did I get all the enemies up here? I did. So what you've got to do is shoot these barriers and they'll flip around and go somewhere else. So you have to you've got to kind of go up in the air shoot that and that it's then very difficult to avoid it before you get smashed into one useful thing is you can shoot the guns from above if you get the angle of your weapon right uh, we're getting towards the end of the level here I think There's another uh, barrier here to shoot just get out of the way of that here you go you've got to pick up this sub weapon thing and that, that's it basically the levels over again you've got to rotate the ship and you're constantly falling down the screen oh my shields low now from bashing into stuff very easy to bash into stuff multiple times as well uh, and get stuck in the environment as you'll see when things get a bit more hectic than this first level which is now over So level 1 completed, mission 1 I should say, you get bonuses for POWs rescued, ships remaining, time etc and on you go to the next stage which is more of the same but more difficult, much more difficult as you're about to find out. So the SAT scan has been upgraded now so that it'll show you various points on the map uh, that you've got to react interact with so that section one there is just where you start from but it will show you where the sub module is each level I think the idea is to collect the sub module so you can see that it's a bit slow this uh, mission briefing screen uh, there's also a doomsday device that you've got to destroy to retrieve the troops and the sub module 
and also this mining area is equipped with rail transports, they allow great stability when fighting the enemy. So there we go, lots more information given and away we go with level 2. And these are these rail things so you can actually stick the ship to those and manoeuvre around the level in an, in an easier way. Oh I'm getting stuck, oh I'm gonna die. Yeah, and I've blown up, got stuck under that bouncy thing. So there we go, that was a level gone. Let's go up to the right hand side instead to begin with because if I recall correctly there's something good to pick up from here. Oh no, that's just a shield upgrade, which I don't really need at the moment. Oh, and there we go, that's what I mean about getting stuck in the landscape unexpectedly and you can't get away from it and it just drains all your shields and kills you, so that's not great. Um, it shouldn't be that uh, sticky, I think, is the best way to describe it. So I'm going to bolt myself on. Oh, I'm going to pick this thing up first, which is a uh, ooh, green level on the, uh, on the um, weapons, I guess. Yeah, okay. So um, you, when you're on these rails you can use the up and down on the d-pad to move yourself up and down these rails and they allow you to stick yourself to the environment or stick yourself to the rail and control yourself a little bit more easily. You can see something circling around on the right there, I'll get to that in a second. I'm just going to do this bit first. Get rid of the weapon there as well. When you die, uh, the level doesn't reset except for the power-ups do to some extent, so that's good. So the fuel and... Ooh, somebody's trying to shoot me from over the right there. The fuel and uh, shield power-ups respawn, uh, but the weapon one doesn't. So this is this is the big bad that I've got to kill on this level, which is currently blasting me to hell. So the idea is you position yourself on this thing. You should be able to blast this thing without having to float yourself around and waste fuel but you've also got to avoid the weapons and the shield's low now so I should probably detach myself from this and go and upgrade my shields if I can do that okay so let's head up to the uh, right hand side again Ooh. I'm okay for fuel at the moment Let's go and get this shield that we saw earlier. Try not to crash into the landscape this time. So much like thrust, it's, it's pretty tricky to control the ship. You do get used now from fuels low as well, so let's go down here and get some fuel. Um, it's pretty tricky to control the ship, but you do get used to it. It's very precise movements required, and try not to thrust too much. Although, what's a bit annoying is your fuel runs out even when you're not thrusting, so your, your fuel gradually drains so that's a little bit annoying uh, there's a there's a thing to shoot over this side as well so let's get this as well bolt myself onto this thing which as I mentioned means you don't have to use up any fuel let's see if I can blast I'm not sure you can actually maybe I can blast away these walls here yeah I'm blasting some of them so blast as much as I can because there's something behind the walls that's worth picking up may as well blast them from here while I can not easy to detach from the rails either without engaging with the enemy which does blast you off so let's just try and do, do a bit of damage to this thing while I'm over here there we go blasted away some of the tail gradually slowly blasting away you can see it certainly gets a lot more difficult very quickly there we go it's knocked me off so I may as well do this bit over here now I'm near no oh, fuel's fine Ooh, that's what I mean. One one press of the wrong button, and um, you just like, find yourself in the landscape, and you're constantly having to thrust up to get a bit of height to then throw weapons at the uh, bullets at the enemies. So, okay, let's. Oh no, no I nearly got into that position again where I got blasted. So, let's just shoot that thing. Oh, yeah, my fuel's low again. Oh. It's really hard to hit the bit. No, I'm gonna. Ah, oh, honestly, there we go. That's what I'm trying to do. That's going out of the way now, so I can collect this fuel pod. Just in. Oh, come on! I ran out of fuel just as I was about to get the pod. So that's another life gone. It's quite infuriating. Uh, and yeah, as as you've seen, very difficult, even from the second level onwards. What I haven't talked about yet is graphics or sounds. So the graphics, they're not the best on the Mega Drive, I don't think. They're very reminiscent of Amiga graphics, I would say. A game like Xenon 2, for example, 
uh, it seems to resemble that quite closely uh, and sound pretty good you've got some typical weapon bullet sounds and explosions the music in the background is not too bad again the Mega Drive certainly done better in its lifetime let's just switch to missiles to get this thing try and get it oh I'm not getting anywhere near to it now come on where are you and that was it I've run out of missiles if I recall correctly there's something over the other side if we can get over there without getting engaged with this I think there's some missiles over this side in this thing that I blasted earlier on as well. Oh no, that's an extra life, which I do need because I'm running out. You do get an extra life on each level, which is nice, but obviously that doesn't respawn. So let's try and take out this thing. I don't even see where it is now. Here it is, right. Oh. Now my fuel's low, so I need to get away again. I feel like the fuel runs out too quickly. It, it's annoyingly quick that it runs out of fuel no I'm gonna go down and attach myself to this rail again it's just easier than trying to hover all the time come on where are you see the thing doesn't stay on the screen very long so it's hard to tell whether you're even engaging with it okay so done one side of it come on where are you it just disappears off the screen I, d I don't think the game's very well designed in all honesty oh Let's see if this helps me here and I'm certainly not as impressed with it as I thought I would be well, let's keep at it I'm gonna have to get off this aren't I I need to go over the other side here to get the other side of it I think very hard to get your shots and tight when it's moving around and this is just a second screen must be getting close to eliminating this thing now well there we go that's the one side done is that it is it dead it seems to be blowing up fuel's low again so I know it's still around but let's get fuel again so you've got to hit it a few more times I think okay let's see if we can finish it up not even sure which bit I'm supposed to be hitting now. No, it's. Uh, I think I've got shields up the top. Here we go. Oh. oh dear. Yeah, not really enjoying the game. I've got to say, it's a bit laborious for a second level. Better players than me can probably. Maybe I should be using this reverse boost to get it. There we go. I finally got it. Okay, so that now opens up a gap in the top left here, which allows you to finally get the prisoners of war and the sub thing and finally oh fuel's low again so I'm gonna have to be quick here it's over here somewhere or I'm gonna run out of fuel again and there we go mission two finally completed oh dear that was just too laborious to be any fun really it was just hard work so early in the game even thrust isn't this difficult after two screens so let's move on to stage three. And the SATSCAN's been updated again. And a high powered mining laser has been com commandeered by the aliens. Deflectors have been placed for use against the laser. You must decide how best to use them. You begin and end your mission somewhere. I mean, come on, it's too slow. There you go, top right hand corner. It's just too slow. Intelligence has placed a utility truck to assist you. It can mount a drop deflector if the need arises. There you go. Again, just too slow. Put the numbers on the screen while you're writing that text on the screen. Destroy the alien housing here. They are located behind security wall. Okay. Perhaps the laser may be of some use. So you can see a, a puzzle elements being added here now where you've got to use these deflectors to um, yeah let's just get on with it ah oh, yeah okay so you've got to use these deflectors to uh, to redirect a laser even the simplest gun turrets just take a load of bullets to get rid of so yeah um, you'll see the laser in a minute but you've got to use the deflector which you pick up down the bottom of the screen here because I have played this level once before I've worked out to complete it. This is as far as I got when I played through before. 
So we've got some missiles there, may as well get those and may as well top up on fuel while I'm here as well. And you, and you pick up this deflector. Oh, there we go. So I've got it now. Much like the orb in uh, Thrust, I suppose, that you pick up. It's got that same sort of sway mechanism and it does make movement of your ship a little bit more tricky because it's heavier. Uh, so you can deploy that by switching to it as a weapon. Uh, you've got these things flying around which you can't kill, but they kind of get stuck to you and move you around. And here we go. Here's, here's the laser flying around. And you can see that's going to cause me a load of damage. So what I need to do is switch to the deflector. Ooh, uh, and oh, try not to get hit by those things and drop the deflector on this truck. There we go. So that's now going to move and rearrange where the... Oh, I'm out of fuel almost again already. So let's just go and sit on this. You sit on this thing here and this opens the door below. And now I'm probably going to run out of fuel before I get any further. Oh, But there we go. I shall just go falling down here now when the fuel runs out. And I'll lose another life. It's just too hard early in the game to make any real progress just gets infuriating. I've got plenty of lives left so still can carry on going so uh, what you've done does uh, persist so I can now go through this gate at the bottom get rid of that thing there and there's, there's uh, shields to pick up, so I may as well upgrade my shields or replenish them. Also replenish fuel while I'm there as well. And then you've got another deflector to pick up here. Which again weighs your ship down, making it harder to move around, which means you use fuel faster. And this is as far as I got. Oh, and I'm stuck in the environment and I can't get out. Oh, I just got out in time. Um, so yeah, you, I think what you've got to do is position this thing so that it deflects the laser. Now my fuel's low. It's just so hard to keep still. There we go. Oh, there we go. This is this is the furthest I've got. So this I've never done this before. Oh, there's some fuel there as well. I might actually survive. Amazing. So yeah, you have to deflect the laser through that wall. And now, I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to do now because this is the furthest I've ever got in the game. Shield refreshed. What am I supposed to do? Destroy this thing below me? I don't really want this deflector now. I think, shall I just detach it? I guess I can just detach it or do I need to do something else with it now? Let's just detach it and see what happens. Okay. So am I supposed to go down here somehow? I'm really not sure what I'm supposed to do now. Oh, okay, you can destroy... Ah, oh, got it, okay. Gotta destroy all this landscape. Have I? Oh, we just gotta destroy this bit now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's unlocked the laser somehow. And now my fuel's low again, of course. So let's go. Oh, back across here because there was some fuel down here. Well, I'm pleased that this is the furthest I've ever got in the game. I'm gonna run out of fuel just before I get there, aren't I? Oh no, I've done it. Um, while I'm doing the video, so at least I'm seeing something new and so are you, especially if you've never seen this game before. Uh, I'm still not that impressed with the game, I must be honest. It's it's a little bit too hard and a little bit too finicky right from the start. So what is going... oh dear, <laughs> that didn't go well. So what am I supposed to do here now? So obviously I'm supposed to destroy that laser somehow, but I've no idea what I'm supposed to do. Do I need to pick up another deflector and deflect it against itself somehow maybe let's try and pick up the deflector again is it down here nope so I haven't got a deflector so what the hell am I supposed to do something with these ships here maybe okay oh wow okay every so often they stop and arrange themselves to deflect oh my lord so you're supposed to make them arrange somehow so that they shoot itself 
Oh dear, no, that wasn't good. I think that's my last life. Nope, it's still going on. So I must have to do something to arrange these lasers in the in correct position for it to shoot itself, I guess. But really, I've got no idea. It's just very hard for the third level of a game. And I think that was the criticism of the game when it came out. It's just insanely difficult um, for such an early stage in the game. Perhaps I should have played it on easy level and it would have been a little bit easier. But I bet all that means is your fuel and your shields don't run out as quickly. So all this stuff's going on, but like, what, what is it doing? It's, it's, I don't know. Eventually, I guess you arrange it in a way that it shoots itself. Oh, that was close. But how? Maybe you just shoot at it. Maybe that's all you have to do. Didn't think of that. I am shooting at it. Oh, I've got missiles as well. Yeah, maybe that's all you need to do. But again, it's just so hard. So like up left a little bit. Am I doing it any damage or not? I've got no idea. How many times have we got to hit it to actually destroy it? Am I destroying it? Is it doing it any damage? Just got no idea. And all the time my shields are running out as well. I just don't know what's going on. Now my fuel's low past caring really. Bit of a disappointment this one, I thought I'd enjoy this because I do like Thrust even though it's a hard game and I do like Mega Drive shooters generally but I've got to say yeah I mean I'm just shooting away at it and it just doesn't seem to be doing any damage to it but I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing something else so yeah it's a, it's a puzzle that's too hard to solve for this early in the game. No, I, yeah I've just got no idea and I'm dead. There you go, my fuel's run out, my lives have run out, and my patience has run out with this game. So there you go, that was Subterranea. Not impressed with that at all, unfortunately. I thought I'd enjoy it. It seemed like my kind of game, but it's just way too hard right from the start, really. The controls are a bit twitchy. The graphics and sound aren't really up to Mega Drive standards for sort of 1994. I'd expect better. I think it looks like more like an Amiga game uh, from sort of 1990 than a Mega Drive game from 1994 so overall not impressed with that one and I think that's going to go on the for sale pile uh, so all that remains for this video is to spin the wheel of names and see what game I'm going to be playing next after I put my name in may as well do that for all that effort oh that'll do let's get on with it and spin the wheel And next up for this series is going to be a BBC Micro game. It's the Peter Scott Trilogy. So that's actually three games on one cassette. Not that I'll be loading them from cassette because I don't do that with BBC Micro games. But that's what I'll be playing next time around. If you've got any thoughts about the game I've just played, then let me know in the video comments. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.